In this video, we are going to look at fitting a function to data, linear, quadratic, and polynomial from our chapter on polynomial functions. So on the left here, I have the worksheet open. We're going to follow the directions here. And on the right, I have this file, this uh, Desmos, open, which has polynomial regression set up, kind of an investigation for us to do. So um, the practice problems are here. I already opened the graph. I do suggest opening them side by side or having um, two windows side by side if you have the room for that. So number one says click the play button by linear regression. By that I mean this arrow here. And it will then do linear regression with our data points. We only have a few data points. Our table is x sub 1, y sub 1. And it says to fit a polynomial curve to a set of data, remember that we are looking for the smallest degree polynomial, the smallest degree polynomial that will fit data to the highest degree. So we don't want to just have a function that will go through every single point no matter what. We want it also to show um, a good fit to our data points. The correlation coefficient r squared is the best measure of what the regression, what which regression will best fit the data, but it's not the only thing that we should look at. So let's do linear regression. And when I do that, I have, um, it did linear regression for me. It's not graphed yet, but I can turn it on by clicking on that colored dot. So there's the line that Desmos calculated would go through the data points. R squared is 0.5795. Remember, R squared will be between 0 and 1. It's a measure of how um, close all of the points are to the line that they graphed. So 1 would be it's going through every point. 0 would be it doesn't fit the data at all. It's not a good fit. And R is very similar to that. R goes between negative 1 and 1. When you square it, it's just between 0 and 1. So the closer to 1, the closer the points are to fitting that line. This, you can do this, we haven't talked about it before. It's showing how close the points are to, I'd like to undo that. It's showing how close those points are to the line. It's a little bit of statistics in the background. And then A and B are what we would use to write the equation that would fit, that would match that line. So this would be Y equals 0.4838X plus 3.058 and so on. So that's the regret the for when it says what the r squared value is you'd say 0.5795 when it says look at the graph of the data along with the graph function how well does the data fit you'd say it's okay it's going in the general direction but it doesn't really um, fit that well there's quite a few points that are not on the line or even really that close so it's okay Okay, then I'm going to turn that one off so we don't see it anymore, and I'm going to go ahead to quadratic regression. And he had calculated it out for us. We can see what r squared is. It's a little higher than what it was for the linear, and our values, if we needed to write the equation, are there. Let's turn it on and see how it looks. So it looks pretty good, except that, you know, when it's not graphed, I didn't think that was going to look like a quadratic. It's kind of funny, isn't it? But, you know, it, it fits okay. It's just that the shape of the dots weren't really, it, in my mind, I didn't think, wow, that's a quadratic looking kind of thing. Like it's not going down and then back up. But maybe. So it's okay. And then we would try our cubic. And here's the cubic one. We can see that R squared is really quite high. And when I show what the graph looks like for the second part of the equation, oh yeah, I can kind of see now that the data was going up and then down and then up again. So, so far it seems like, wow, this one really actually is fitting the shape of the graph the best of the ones we've looked at so far. Because it goes up and then down and then up again. And then um, we can also do more regression than cubic. We could do quartic, which would be to the fourth degree. We could do quintic, quint, quintic, quintic. To the fifth degree, we could do sixth degree, we could do seventh degree, we could do eighth degree, we could keep going. So let's read this. It says if we look at the three types of regression, the one that fits best is cubic, but as we get a larger and larger degree, it will get closer and closer because we only have five points. 
So if we do a six degree regression right here, look at r squared is exactly one. And when we look at it, wow, it hit, hits every point, but look at the crazy graph. It shows it going up, down. There's no data point here, but it shows that there's a minimum here, a relative minimum. Then it goes back up, and then it goes way up here where we don't have any points, and then back down again. So you can do regression that will hit every single point if you have enough of a degree compared to your number of points. If your degree is one more than your number of points, it's going to make you can make it be the exact r squared equals 1. But does that mean that's the best function for the data? And then um, that's what this says right here. So when it says read the final thoughts notes, these are my final thoughts notes. I should have called it final thoughts notes, but it's this part right here. So read this and think about what I just said and then um, answer the question here. Decide whether you think the sixth degree, the third degree cubic, the second degree quadratic, or the linear is the best fit for this data. All right, and then we're going to go on to, here are the models that we'll be using. We know the linear, we've used that one. We've used quadratic, and now we're going to do cubic and possibly quartic. Um, I forgot the, the one here. Oops. There we go, there's the one. So it has to have a sub one after each one of those. And we could use this, or we could open up a new regression, you know, a new um, graph. Maybe I'll just do it. And you'll want to have that running while you have your um, question to answer. So in 6, 7, and 8, you are given some data points, and you are going to graph them. And you're going to decide what type of function fits best and the equation of that function. So I will, um, I'll just graph number six. You can make a data table, remember. So pick table and then enter your data points here. And remember that you want your table to um, have the matching sub numbers after it as you do your regression. So let's say I started my table and then decided I'm just going to put the next question underneath it. Now it's doing x sub 2, y sub 2. So if I was doing regression with x sub 1, y sub 1, it wouldn't use this data. It wouldn't match. So your sub numbers after your x and y values in your table have to match what your regression is. And one more, 784. So now I can start my regression. I can try linear. Whoops. So that would be linear And let's look at our points here. I can't see all my points, so I would change my scale so that I can have higher y values so I can see all of them a little bit better. There we go. Now I can see all of them. And it's not bad. Linear is not bad. And I can see that the R squared value is quite high, but I might try quadratic and I might try polynomial just to see which one fits best. And then um, once I decide which one fits best, then remember that you need to write the equation into the, um, the worksheet. So this one fits even better, and then maybe I'll hide that one so you can see a little bit better. That one's very good. So far, either of these would be a good fit. Um, you'll decide which one you think is the better fit. What I don't like about the quadratic is it quadratic shows it going down and then back up again. And we did not have that pattern in our points. Our points are just going up. However, Perhaps quadratic fits because it's limited by only x being 
positive. Maybe it's a real world thing like time and x can't be negative. I'll try one more. I'll try the um, cubic one to the third plus b x one squared plus c x sub one plus one more constant at the end d. And I'll hide the quadratic now. Wow, that's that's fitting the points perfectly. Again, we don't have any down here, it's negative. So as a researcher, as a statistician, you'd have to decide if it makes sense to use this function if there's no data points in that area. Again, there's reasons when domains are limited to only the positive, so perhaps that is why. If you decide on cubic, which you can, then you would not need to include this d value in your equation because it's so tiny. This is the teeny, teeny, tiny number when it's 10 to the negative 15th. It's a very small decimal number, so you would not write that. So if you decided the cubic, because r squared equals 1, and I would agree that that's a pretty good uh, fit, and the, it's not terrible, it's not any worse than the quadratic as far as fitting the shape of the data, then you would use 0.166667 as our uh, first a value, and then b is 0.5 and then C is the point, 33333x. And then you don't need to include plus that last number. It's close enough without it. And then for your function, you'd say cubic. And then 7 and 8 do the same thing. Decide which function best fits the data. In addition to looking at the r-squared value, look at how the, the shape of the graph is. All right, and then you're going to do a couple more problem in number nine. The graph is already made for you, so you can click on this link to look at the shape of the data, even before doing regression. Look at the shape and see if you think it should be linear, quadratic, cubic, and so on. So the shape of the data suggests to me quadratic. It's going up, it's going down again. So that means um, yes, you could probably do a fourth degree or a third degree that will fit every one, but it looks quadratic, so we should honor the shape of the graph when you pick that. Um, the next one is an interesting question. We are going to I'm gonna go back to my other Desmos. In our table here, um, instead of a table, we are going to look at an equation. So, do I have all these off? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to graph this equation, y equals x to the third minus 15x squared plus 66x minus 80. That is a graph of the volume of a box, a rectangular prism, you, and the y values would be the volume, and the x value would be the, um, like the, the dimensions. So we can look at the roots of this function. The roots are where it crosses the x-axis. They are 2, 5, and 8 to help us factor this. So we can factor this using the roots. This would factor as x minus 2 x minus 5, and x minus 8. My parentheses at the beginning there. And we can graph that, and we can see that that would be the exact same equation. We can double check that. So I'll open up another one. Let me close some of these. All right, so this one I'm going to do y equals my factors, x minus factored form, x minus 5, x minus 8. And look, the green and the blue graphs are right on top of each other. They're the exact same thing. So I have that factored form is that same as that cubic polynomial form. All right, it says, since the volume of a rectangular prism can be found by volume equals length times width times height, that tells you something about your factored form. One of these is length, maybe x minus 2. One of them is width, maybe x minus 5, and one is height. 
So if I know the x value and plug it in here, I could find the length, the width, and the height. Now these might be rearranged um, because multiplication is commutative. I could, I could have this as height times width times length or whatever order. But those are the factored forms. You can use x to find the length, the width, and the height of a box. So um, if the volume is 3, or find the volume when x equals 3, that means I would plug 3 into each of these and see what I get. But when you do that, 3 minus 2 is 1, but 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So it's hard to say what the height and the length are at those points, isn't it? Because they don't quite fit into our um, equations here. You can find the volume, though, because 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 5 is... Um, Let's do it up here. 3 minus 1 is, is 1. And then I would have 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So you can find the volume. That says that at x equals 3, here's x equals 3 right here, that the volume will be 10, which we can also find. Um, so it doesn't transfer directly to the factored form. And then it says, explain why x equals 7 cannot be used for this problem. If you go over to x equals 7 right here, look, the volume would be negative. Is it negative 10 or right around there? It's right here. Yeah, it'd be negative 10. But what sense does that make? How can your volume be negative? So you can't have your x values have to be where the volume would be positive. So it looks like your x values need to be between 2 and 5. Now what about over here? When x is 8 or greater, then your volume is always going to be positive. So maybe your x values need to be 8 and greater for this to make sense. Or you can say it's both parts, between 2 and 5 and greater than 8. But when you do it between 5 and 8, you get a negative volume. And when it's less than 2, it's a negative volume. So those numbers would not be part of your domain. Then it says, what would be the maximum volume the box could be? So the max our volume is between 2 and 5 is right here. A little bit over 10. But look at this max volume. It's unlimited. When you let x be greater than 8, you have an unlimited um, possibility for your volume of your box. It's probably limited by the size of your factory where you're making your box. And then you answer the last question is reasonable domain. We've already talked about that. Volume can't be negative, so make sure that you pick x values where you would have a positive volume between 2 and 5, and again, when x is greater than 8. Or you can decide where it makes sense the best. All right, and then there's one more question about the graph is already made for you. This is the data. Here's the graph. And Micah made a scatter plot and decided a cubic function fits best because, look, at it had a really good R squared value, I bet. But this shows it going up and then down and then back up again. I mean, what would this mean over here? If these are X's hours after opening, what would it mean if you're 30 some hours after opening? That's like a new day. There's only 24 hours in a day. So this, while it does fit the points, the shape of it doesn't really match what's happening in the real world. So you can graph again and maybe try quadratic, because it seems like a quadratic would maybe make more sense for this. And then again, the domain is going to be x values, which is time. So think about how many hours are in a day and how many hours you might be open and then answer the last couple questions from the graph or from the data, probably from the graph or your equation. All right, so that's it for uh, using polynomial regression. If you have questions, please let me know. And thanks for listening. Have a great rest of your day.